In our last program, we looked at the gas laws. I summarized these over here on the left. The volume, proportional to the number of moles. So again, what does that look like in a graph? So let's bring that out again. So volume being proportional to the number of moles would give us a, a straight line plotting on this axis the volume and this axis the number of moles. Volume is also proportional to temperature. So it would give a similar graph with temperature on the side here. Volume, however, is inversely related to the pressure, meaning 1 over the pressure. So a graph of volume versus the other three variables would look as follows. Now, you might recall from math that this particular shape, a straight line, has an equation. And that equation for a straight line would be y equals mx plus b. Where b designates the intercept. Down here, our intercept is at 0, 0, provided we use the temperature in the Kelvin scale. So we can essentially remove that because the intercept is 0. So y will equal mx. Now in this particular case, y is our volume. So y will equal the slope of this line times x. And in this case, x is this combination of variables, moles temperature over pressure. Now the slope of this line, the rise over the run, this is given a special volume name in gas chemistry, and it's called R, the universal gas constant, which is essentially the slope of this line. So we have the equation then, V is equal to R and T over P, which is often put in a linear form, meaning we multiply both sides by the pressure, and you'll often see the equation PV equals nRT. And this is what's in your IB data booklet. Now a little bit about the units of R. R, as I mentioned, is the slope of this line, which would be sort of a change in volume on the top, and the bottom would be the change in NT over the pressure. Now, if I use for my change in volume, units of decimeters cubed, the units of n are mole, the units of T are Kelvin, and the units of pressure, 1 over pressure, would be kilopascals to the negative 1. And bringing that negative 1 up top, we get units then of decimeters cubed, kilopascals, moles and Kelvin. Uh, and if we use these particular units, meaning that our volume is in decimeters cubed, our pressure has to be in kilopascals and our temperature has to be in Kelvin, then we get the value for R as being 8.31. Now, that's not the only set of units we can use here to use this 8.31, consider the following. A decimeter cubed is the same as a cubic meter divided by a thousand. A kilopascal is the same as a thousand pascals. On the bottom, I would still have units of moles and Kelvin. Now in this case, the thousands will cancel. So this is another combination of units that's possible to be using when you're calculating 8.31. So when you use the ideal gas law, you must pay particular attention to the units. They must either be in decimeters cubed and kilopascals, consider that to be case one, or we have to use meters cubed and pascals. Now, why is it called the ideal gas law? The word ideal gas law comes from the idea that gases 
So long as we consider the gas particles to be extremely small and not taking up any space, and so long as the particles don't attract each other, they will generate the straight line that we see here. However, real gases don't behave quite like that. Real gases do have some attraction for each other, and real gases do actually take up some of the space in the balloon. Now, this causes a deviation from this line. Now, when does that deviation happen? Well, we get deviations happening when the particles are close together. So if we can get our particles close, these factors start to falter. What conditions cause the particles of a gas to be close to each other? If I make my temperature really low and I allow the particles to slow down, then they start to attract each other. And also, if I make the pressure really high, then the particles will start to take up a considerable amount of space inside the container. Now, where does that happen on this graph? If I make my temperature go down to be a small number, and if I make my pressure go up, that's going to make this value small. So when we're down at this end of the graph, we tend to deviate from the ideal gas law. So it actually looks something like this. Real gases behave more like this. And then as we get to higher temperatures and lower pressures, we then follow the straight line more carefully. So we tend to get real gases behave following this line and ideal gases following this line. Let's use the ideal gas law in a couple of situations right now. Let's determine the moles of gas present in 500 cubic centimeter flask at 20 degrees Celsius. So let's see what information I've got. Temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Pressure, uh, 98 kilopascals. And I've got a volume, 500 cubic centimeters. And I want to figure out the number of moles. Our ideal gas law says that PV is nRT. So if I want to get N all by itself, I'm going to take the pressure and the volume and divide it by the gas constant and the temperature. Now, prior to putting them in, a little bit of a unit check. If I'm going to use R, I have to have things in kilopascals, uh, which I have here. So that's good to go. This must then be in decimeters cubed. So I have to divide this by a thousand to turn centimeters cubed into decimeters cubed. So I actually have 0 0.500 decimeters cubed. And our temperature must be converted to the Kelvin scale. So I'm going to add 273 to that to get it in the Kelvin scale and I'm at 293 Kelvin. So now the units are set to go for using 8.31 the value for R so we can substitute in our values pressure 98.0 volume 0.500 R the gas constant that's in your IV data booklet 8.31 and finally our temperature 293 Kelvin and that'll then solve for n three significant digits in the data that I've got here and that's going to finish up with 0 0.0201 moles so that would be the amount of gas that I would have in the container Let's look at a second, a little bit more involved problem. Determine the density of carbon dioxide at the same conditions as above. Okay, so that means my temperature is going to be 293 Kelvin and my pressure um, 98 kilopascals. Question would like to know what's the density of the gas, and I also know the identity of the gas, carbon dioxide, CO2, which has a molar mass of 44 
0.01 grams per mole. So let's start with the ideal gas law. PV is NRT. Well, I'm not given the number of moles here, but I am told the identity of a gas. I can replace N, the number of moles, with mass over molar mass. So that's now RT and PV. Now, I also can uh, get rid of this M by multiplying both sides by M. So M here, molar mass here. Now, I can recall density, because I love density problems, is mass over volume. So if I can divide this side by the volume and this side by the volume, I'll be left then with M over V, density. And R and T are still remaining on this side. The volumes cancel, molar mass times pressure. And then to isolate then for the density, I have MP over RT. Now those of you that are physicists out here will know that density can also be replaced by the symbol rho. Anyway, putting in the values, we have 44 for the molar mass. Our pressure is 98.0. R, 8.31 from the data booklet, and our temperature, 293 Kelvin. Solving for that, 1.77. Now, mass is in grams. What about volume? Well, if we're using kilopascals over here, remember that kilopascals are paired with liters or decimeters cubed with the use of R. So this volume for my density must be in decimeters cubed. So that's it. There's a look at a couple of problems that employ the use of the ideal gas law. In the next section, we'll take a look at reacting gases. Thanks for watching.